estate tax story and I need to give you, well, what is the time? The time is quarter two. So I need to give you a good five minutes, then I will take a good five minutes, and then suddenly it will be one o'clock. So there's a little bit of application that we can do here uh, if we understand how deferred tax works. This, I think, will help us. This is on page 104. For the avoidance of any doubt, it is a finance lease. Yeah, don't get too stressed out about that. Yeah, it's a five-year asset on a five-year lease, so it is a finance lease. So uh, don't get uh, stressed out about that.
the first day of the accounting period, Ronaldo entered into a five-year lease. The asset was recorded at the present value of the minimum lease payments, the cash price of 12000 the asset is depreciated over five years, has no residual value. Um, the lease payments are $15,000. Because you're going to pay three, 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 three. You're going to pay $15,000. They're payable in arrears. You are paying more for the asset than the asset is worth. So you're paying extra amount of interest. The effective rate of interest is 8%. This may be about deferred tax, but it's also about leasing. And what deferred tax wants is the carrying value. This is a finance lease. substantially all the risks and rewards have passed. This is a finance lease. Substantially all the risks and rewards have passed. Ronaldo accounts for the substance Ronaldo accounts for the substance, i.e. recognizes an asset and a liability, i.e. recognizes an asset and a liability. So my goal, my target, is to work out the carrying value of the asset and my target is to work out the carrying value of the liability at the year end. I don't care about year two. I don't care about year three. I don't care about year four. All I care about is what the carrying value is 12 months later. Because I've got to work out the deferred tax implication at the end of the year. Now, let me slow down a little bit because we're entering into a finance lease. If you enter into a finance lease, you are capitalizing the cash price. You're capitalizing the present value of the minimum lease payments. You are recognizing simultaneously an asset which you haven't paid for, so you have to set up a liability. What happens to the asset? Depreciation. The useful life of the asset is five years. The lease period is five years. Five out of five. If you lease the asset for the whole of its life, uh, it's a finance lease. If you lease the asset for the whole of its life, uh, it's a finance lease. You're the only one getting the benefit from the asset. So one fifth of that is 2,400. So the carrying value is 9.6 for the asset. Now, the liability is a different kettle of fish. The liability is to be accounted for at our friend amortized cost. So we have the effective rate in the P&L. You've borrowed money. Your initial recognition is that you have borrowed 12. Payment in advance or payment in arrears? Yeah, that's normal. That's normal. What's the finance cost? What's the effective rate in the P&L? 8%. So we will charge the profit and loss account with 8%.
as our finance cost. 8% of 12,000, 960. Double entry for that 960, debit P&L, credit liability. It's not a cash flow. You'll add back the finance cost in the reconciliation because you've debited the P&L, you're crediting the liability. It's not a cash flow. The cash that is being paid is in arrears, and the cash that is being paid is free. So the closing balance of the liability, the closing balance of the liability, 9,960. Now sometimes when I do this question in class, everybody gets very excited and they do year two and they do year three and they do year four and they do year five and it comes to nil and they're all very happy because that's as a teacher often what I do. But I'm in an exam, I'm wanting to know the deferred tax implications of something happening at the end of this year. So I'm not bothered with going forward. <coughs> so, step one, deal with the carrying value. Step one, deal with the carrying value. What do you have in the books? So this has been a, a, a revision, if you like, of finance leases. Um, what do these two add up to? Well, you don't add them up really, do you? Yeah? So what you've got there is a net liability. Step one, you've dealt with the carrying value. If a deferred tax question comes up, part of what you're talking about, surely, is the accounting treatment of the carrying value. And then you can be asked, oh, what's the deferred tax implications of that? I've got one sentence to pin all of my answer on. Ronaldo claims a tax deduction for the annual rent as the lease does not qualify for tax relief. That's what it says. Ronaldo claims a deduction for the annual rental pay as the lease does not qualify now, maybe we're guessing here, but this is sometimes what we have to do in the exam. Take a little piece of information and just, 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 push, just push a bit forward. What's the tax man doing? They are saying the lease does not qualify. The lease does not qualify for tax relief. So what do we think the tax base of the asset or liability is? From the tax perspective, zero. They're treating it as an operating lease. If we thought it was an operating lease, we would expense three, expense three, expense three, no asset, no liability. If we thought it was an operating lease, we would have a simple expense. What the tax man is doing is giving us a simple tax relief on what we pay. So there are devoid of the imagination of substance. They are devoid of that leaping forward. We are pretending it's an asset and a liability of ours. Legally, it's not. The tax man takes a slightly more literal view. So, deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability, yeah. The finance lease is ignored for taxation purposes. The finance lease is ignored for tax purposes, i.e. there is a nil tax base. There is a nil tax base. So we've got a carrying value of a liability of 360. We've got a tax base which is nil. So we have a temporary difference which is negative 360. Would you describe that temporary difference as 
taxable because we're excited that we've got a gain? Or would you describe that as deductible because we're a bit disappointed? Is this taxable or deductible? Deductible. deductible, yeah. Does not look like a gain. We've just got a liability. Liability is smack of losses. Yeah? Assets smack of gains. So this is deductible. This is deductible. There's a tax rate given at the beginning of the question, which is 20%. 20 percent this is 72 so this would represent your year end deferred tax asset so we have at the year end a deferred tax asset of 72 I have gone through a process yeah I have gone through a process yeah there is a deductible temporary difference there is a deductible temporary difference. I've said that already. I don't, I don't need to repeat myself, yeah? There is a deductible temporary difference, yeah? Because the carrying value is a liability, the tax base is nil, so it's a temporary difference. There is a reason why it is called a temporary difference. The reason it's called a difference is because the two numbers are different. The reason it's a temporary difference, because in five years' time, the carrying value will be zero, because the asset would have been fully depreciated and the liability paid off, and in five years' time, the tax base will be zero. So any difference between the carrying value and the tax base goes in the fullness of time. You will eventually sell the asset so it becomes nil. You eventually pay off the liability, so it becomes nil. Eventually both become nil. So they are called temporary differences. We account for deferred tax on temporary differences. Any calculation is going to be relatively simple, because it's simply going to be what's the carrying value, what's the tax base multiplied by percentage. You know, it's not, it's not going to be a big number crunching process. If you have a revaluation, the carrying value goes up, you have a gain, so you have a deferred tax liability on that gain. Excellent. Well done. Yes. Yes. Foreign exchange differences. Yes. Share-based payment. Yes. Deferred tax. Yes. Big group balance sheet question. Yes. Yeah, we have done a lot this morning, and we still have some fun and games to do this afternoon. But we will be, our concentrations will be higher, our concentration levels will be higher, our ability 